You got to have the fire of love. You got to have the fire of the word. You have to have the fire of works. All of this is the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in your life. This is what God is trying to bring about for his people. So, that fire, that fire, beloved, burns the fat of self-complacency, of complacency. It burns the fat of selfishness. And amen, amen. I invite you to join me as we have a word of prayer. We are going to be looking today at the final message in God's Powerhouse, the God's Powerhouse series. This is part six. Um, I invite you to pray with me because we're going to ask the Lord's blessing to really bring this series uh, to close with power. So um, bow your heads with me, please. Heavenly Father, we believe you have a blessing for us in store today. Lord, I'm asking that you would please speak through me, that you would use me, Lord, that you would bless those who are watching now and those who will be watching. Please, Lord, open our eyes, give us understanding, and above all, Lord, give us conviction is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, <clears throat> God's Powerhouse, Part 6. The title is The Seven Fires of God. Just to recap, we're going to go to our screen, and you'll remember that we have discussed previously how God gave Moses the sanctuary blueprint and how that sanctuary helps us to understand how God operates. The entire plan of salvation is located in that sanctuary. We, we came to understand over the last uh, five messages that this sanctuary is also considered as the powerhouse of God. You'll remember that uh, in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, uh, Jesus promised his disciples that they would receive power after that the Holy Ghost came upon them. And so the disciples uh, uh, went to Jerusalem and there they tarried and they prayed. And the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit was poured out upon them. They received power through prayer. They received power through prayer. You will also recall that we saw that it was because Jesus had ascended into heaven and there from the right hand of the Father poured out the Spirit on his disciples. In other words, the power came from the house in heaven. The power came from God's dwelling place in heaven and thus we, we identify this sanctuary which, in which Jesus dwells as the powerhouse of God. In Acts chapter 2, verse 1, the Bible says, When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each one of them. The Bible tells us that they received this power uh, uh, as God was pouring his spirit out upon them. And, and, and notice Isaiah 56 verse 7, again, just a short recap. Speaking of this very same sanctuary, uh, the Bible says in verse 7, These will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Once again, we're simply establishing the fact that God's house, the sanctuary, he himself identifies as a house of prayer. What does that mean? 
That means that each article of furniture in the sanctuary is, is designed to help us to understand how to pray. How to pray. The altar of sacrifice, the, the, the um, laver, the table of showbread, the altar of incense. You'll remember all of these articles of furniture we saw were, were, were God was, Jesus was in fact, Pointing our minds to these articles when he gave the Lord's prayer. Remember, he says, after this manner, pray. That's the altar of incense. The incense symbolized prayer. After this manner, pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's pointing to the Father who sits on the throne. Article number six that you see right there, the Ark of the Covenant, the mercy seat. The prayer goes on to say, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We saw that the kingdom of God on earth is his church as is represented by the seven branch candlestick. He goes on to pray, give us this day our daily bread. We saw that that pointed to the table of showbread, which represents the word of God. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. This points to the laver, which was a symbol of forgiveness and repentance. And then it concludes, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That's what happens when we pick up the cross and follow Jesus, which is represented by the altar of sacrifice. Each one of these articles of furniture <clears throat> is teaching us what to pray for, what to pray for. We ought to be praying. We ought to be praying for a self-sacrificing spirit. We ought to be praying for the power to forgive. We ought to be praying for, for a deeper understanding of the word of God. We ought to be praying uh, to be praying more with fire. We ought to be praying to be lights in the world. And we ought to be praying to have the law of God written on our hearts and our minds so that we demonstrate what true love is to the world. We have covered every article of furniture except for one. The last article of furniture we're going to be covering is the seven branch candlestick. And I saved this one for last for a particular reason. And I want you to follow me as we begin our study today. Revelation chapter eight, verse two. The Bible says here, and I saw seven angels which stood before God. And to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which is before the throne. It goes on to say, and the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth and there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and a great earthquake. Now, <clears throat> this verse is, is, is depicting uh, uh, a, a scene where the people of God are praying. Their prayers are ascending up to God. And this is happening sometime shortly after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Saints are gathered and praying. Their prayer is going up to heaven, and then in answer to their prayer, fire falls. So I'm going to ask you a question. What incident can we point to in the Bible shortly after the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ where the saints are praying and then fire falls in answer to their prayer? Come on, everybody. Y'all know this. The answer is, this is what happened on the day of Pentecost. On the day of Pentecost, the saints are praying, and in answer to their prayer, fire falls from the sky. Now, I want you to notice, I want you to notice, um, let me see here. In fact, I just, I'm just going to read these verses in your hearing. I'm going to read Revelation chapter 4, verse 5, and I'm also going to read Revelation chapter 1, verse 4. The Bible says here, and out of the throne proceeds lightnings and thunders and voices. And listen carefully to this. There were seven lamps of fire 
burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Now, that's very interesting because Revelation chapter four, verse five is telling us something about the spirit of God that many of us perhaps have never paid attention to. The Bible says here that these seven lamps of fire are the seven spirits of God. If someone can put that text in the chat for me, that would be great. I want people to see this in the chat. These are the seven spirits of God. I'm going to read another verse, Revelation chapter 1, verse 4. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace unto you and peace from him which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before the throne. Once again, these are seven spirits that are before the throne. They are the spirits of God, but it is collectively, it is considered the Holy Spirit. So here is my question for you. When in Revelation 8, this fire is taken off of the altar, listen carefully, the fire is taken off of the altar and cast into the earth. We know that that is on the day of Pentecost. But in Revelation 4, the Bible says that these seven lamps are the seven spirits of God. So if the seven lamps are the seven spirits of God, but the fire that is cast down onto the earth in answer to the prayer of the saints comes from the altar of incense, the question is, is this a different kind of fire? Is this some different fire other than the Holy Spirit? And I just want you to note this. Go with me to Exodus chapter 30, verse 7. We'll put it up on the screen. Exodus chapter 30, verse 7. The Bible says here, and Aaron, this is speaking of when the priests ministered in the, old, in, in, the, in the Old Testament sanctuary. Notice what it says. And Aaron shall burn thereon sweet incense, talking about the altar of incense, every morning when he dresses the lamp, he shall burn incense upon it. And when Aaron lighted the lamps at even, he shall burn incense upon it, a perpetual incense before the Lord throughout your generations. So what am I saying here? Basically, beloved, it's the same fire. The same fire on the altar of incense is the same fire at the seven branch candlestick. So what I'm saying to you is that when that fire was cast down in answer to the prayers of the saints, it was the fire of the Holy Spirit. But when we go to Revelation chapter four, verse five and Revelation one, verse four, we see that the Holy Spirit is actually seven spirits. Put a one in the chat if you're following me. When the Holy Spirit was poured out, let me say it this way, seven fires fell upon the disciples. Seven flames fell on the disciples. The question is, what were those seven flames? What were those seven fires? And let me just tell you right up front, guess what? We need those seven fires. Now, I haven't even told you what the fires are yet, but just put, give me a seven in the chat. If you're saying today, whoa, I need those seven fires. Because let me tell you, beloved, there is a reason, there is a reason why we need those seven fires. Fires, the seven fires of the Holy Spirit. There is a reason for it. I want you to notice with me Levit Leviticus 24, verse 1. Verse 1 and 2, the Bible says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel that they bring unto thee pure olive oil, beaten for the light, to cause the lamps to burn continually. The lamps were to burn continually. In other words, there were to be seven fires burning at all times. Oh, man. There were to be seven fires burning at all times, continually, not two. I don't think y'all are hearing me. <laughs> not five. Seven fires simultaneously, continually. 
Okay, so let's recap. Fire is taken off of the altar and, 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 and sent down to earth in answer to the prayers of the saints. We know that this fire is the, is the Holy Spirit. Remember, on the day of Pentecost, what rested on top of the disciples? Flames of fire rested on the disciples. We know that this fire is the Holy Spirit, but when we go to Revelation chapter 4 and Revelation chapter 1, we see that there are seven flames within the Holy Spirit. There are seven aspects of the Holy Spirit. There are seven fires that fell upon the disciples. Put a seven in the chat if you're catching what I'm saying. And we are learning today that in the Old Testament type, the seven fires were to be burning continually. Not one like, hey, I got one fire. No, beloved, we need all seven fires burning at one time. Are y'all are y'all catching this? All right. So, so watch this. Why do we need these fires? Remember, we we've we we we've shown that the sanctuary is God's gym. Amen. The sanctuary is God's gym and each article of furniture, the altar of sacrifice, he takes us there to train us on how to be stronger. Oh man, I got to lift the cross. See the cross? I got to lift the cross. Oh man, you know what? It started off heavy, but now I'm getting better and I'm getting stronger. I can bear the cross easier now. And the labor, he, he brings us to the labor to work out forgiveness. And he brings us to the table of showbread to exercise the word of God in our lives and to make it become a reality. And he brings us to the altar of incense to teach us how to exercise prayer. And he brings us to the, to the Ark of the Covenant to teach us how to exercise love. So the question now is, why is the why is the seven branch candlestick necessary? Listen to me. The seven branch candlestick is necessary. The fire is necessary because God wants us to burn fat. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. How many of you how many of you want to lose fat? What just put a one in the chat if you have some fat that you could you could lose. Huh? You have some fat that you can lose. Now, pastor, are you calling me fat? Listen, you understand that fat is a symbol of sin in the Bible. If fat is a symbol of sin in the Bible, then I ask him the question, how many of you want to lose some? Let me ask it this way. How many of you want to lose some weight? How many of you want to burn some calories? That's why God brings us to the candlestick because he desires us to burn off that extra weight. What weight are you talking about, pastor? Notice with me, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every what? Every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Well, let me tell you, man, if you're trying to run and you got weight, you're heavy, you're big, it's, you're not going to be able to run that much. You're not going to be able to run that long. So if you want to learn how to run and how to endure, you have to burn fat. Put, a, put that one in the chat if you're with me, if you're following me. God is saying, listen, I'm sending seven fires down on you to burn off the excess weight. To burn off that excess fat. To, to get you into shape so that you can endure. All right, pastor. Well, well, tell me, what are these fires? So remember this. Watch this. What's it called? Is it called the six branch candlestick? The five branch candlestick? No, 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 no. It's called the seven branch candlestick. And what I want to demonstrate to you today is that the disciples had these seven fires within them. And that's why they were able to turn the world upside down. And beloved, if we want to get in shape, if we want to be fit for the kingdom of heaven, not only must we exercise at the altar of sacrifice and the laver and the table of showbread and the altar of incense and the Ark of the Covenant, we must be exercising at the, 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 the seven branch candlestick because we got weight to burn. 
We got to shed some sin. So, so, fire number one. Are you ready? Are y'all ready? Fire number one. Fire number one is the flame of prayer at the altar of incense. The Bible says in Acts 2 verse 1, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they all were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. I want you to understand that the first flame that we need in our lives is the flame of prayer. When the disciples were praying in answer to that prayer, fire fell. What do you mean flame of prayer? I'm talking about the altar of incense. You had to light the altar in order for the incense to rise. We need the flame of prayer, the altar of incense in our lives because it helps burn. It helps. Watch, watch, watch. Watch what Matthew 26, 39 says. Or Luke 24, rather. And they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way? Let me ask you something. What is it when Jesus talks to you and you talk to him? What do we call that? What do we call that, y'all? When you talk to Jesus and he talks to you, we call that, put it in the chat. We call it prayer. Prayer. And listen, beloved, the disciples said, did not our heart burn when he talked with us, by the way? Beloved, prayer is designed to set our hearts on fire. Prayer is designed to get us burning with a desire to speak with God and to hear his words to us. Prayer, listen to me, prayer helps burn the fat of self-will. Let me say it again. Prayer helps burn the fat of self-will will notice what the text says the bible says in matthew 26 verse 39 and he that is jesus went a little further and fell on his face praying prayed saying oh my father if it be possible let this cup pass from me nevertheless not as i will but as thou wilt beloved prayer is designed to burn the fat of self-will Prayer is designed to bring my will into obedience to God's will. This is why the Bible says in Luke eleven two, 2, and he said unto them, when you pray, say, our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy what? Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So I want you to understand, beloved, that as we pray, the fire of prayer burns away the fat of self-will. Put a seven in the chat if you no no no. Put a one in the chat if you want the if you want the, the fire of prayer. Because we're gonna go down one in the chat if you want the fire of prayer. Lord, I need the fire of prayer in my life. When I receive the Holy Spirit, that is one of the fires that I'm receiving in my life. The fire of prayer. What's the second fire? All right. Y'all want to know the second fire? I want you to watch with me. Second fire is the flame of love, which points us to the Ark of the Covenant. Notice what Proverbs 6.23 says. For the commandment is a lamp and the law is light and reproof of instructions are the way of life. So the Bible tells us here that the law is like a fire. Well, one of the, one of the seven fires, beloved, I want you just to remember it like this. When the spirit comes upon you, he is, he is, he is setting a fire in your heart to love. Why are you saying love, pastor? Because very simple, the Bible tells us in Romans 8, 13, Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another has done what? Has fulfilled the law. Are y'all catching this? So one fire is the fire. Listen, one fire is the fire of prayer. How many of you need the fire of prayer in your life? We all need it. The other, the second fire, and this is not in any order, but we're just going down. The second fire is the fire of love. 
We need the fire of love in our lives. Watch, watch. Let me, let me, let me show you. Song of Solomon chapter 8, one of my most favorite verses in all the Bible. Song of Solomon chapter 8, verse 6 and 7. The Bible says here, set me as a seal upon thine heart, as a seal upon thine arm, for love is strong as death, jealousy is cruel as the grave, the coals thereof are coals of fire, which has a most vehement flame. And now watch this, many waters cannot quench love. Wow. Do you see how the Bible uses love, uh, uh, describes love as a fire? Many waters cannot quench love. Listen carefully to me, beloved. Love, the fire of love, burns the fat of hate. Did you hear what I just said? The fire of love burns the fat of hate. This is why the Bible tells us in 1 John 2, 9. It says, he that saith he is in the light. So light is fire, yeah? He who says he's in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whither he goes because the darkness has blinded his eyes. No wonder the devil wants this to happen. The Bible says because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall what? Wax cold. Wax cold. The Bible tells us, beloved, in Romans 12, 21, be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. In other words, beloved, as I'm praying for the fire of love to take me over, that fire consumes the fat of hate in my life. And you understand how the world is really trying to, it looks like the world just wants to train people how to hate. Hate your enemy. Hate those that don't agree with you. Beloved, do you understand why we need that flame of love burning in our hearts? So what we ask, one, if you want the flame of, of prayer, I saw you put one. Now two, if you want the flame of prayer and the flame of love, put a two in the chat, that's me. Pastor, I want the flame of prayer and I want the flame of love in my life. Well, what about that third flame? What is the third flame? Well, let's go to our screen. The flame of the word, which points us to the table of showbread. Jeremiah 20 verse 9 says this. Then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak anymore in his name. But his word was in my heart as a burning what everybody as a burning fire shut up in my bones and I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay. Beloved, listen carefully to me. The word of God is to be like a fire within us. Not only do we need the fire of prayer, not only do we need the fire of love, the Ark of the Covenant, we also need the fire of the word burning in our bones. It's, it's no wonder, beloved, that, that uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19 tells us this. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, where unto you do well that you take heed as unto a light shining in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. Beloved, we need the word to be that light, that fire in our bones. It is one of those candlesticks. It is one of that, one of those flames that are promised to the believer when they accept Christ and when they accept the Holy Spirit in their lives. God is saying, you're going to be on fire for prayer. You're going to be on fire for love. You're going to be on fire for my word. Who can you imagine being on fire for just these three things? Beloved, listen to me. That's not enough. But can you imagine being on fire with just these three things? See, the word of God, beloved, burns the fat of inner sin in your life. 
This is why the book of Hebrews uh, 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 tells us, in fact, Luke 24, 32, notice this. And they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way, symbolic of prayer, and while he opened to us the scriptures. When you're opening up the scriptures, beloved, when the scriptures begin to speak to you, that is another way of fire becoming a part of who you are. The word of God burns the fat of unseen sin. For the Bible says, for the word of God is quick, powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of sunder, of bow, of, uh, of spirit, and of the joints of marrow, and as a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. So, beloved, when we read the word of God, it is, in essence, burning the wickedness of inner thoughts and intentions in our lives. It's burning that sin out. The things we don't even see about ourselves. That's why we need the fire of the word to be dwelling in us because it burns the fat of inner sin out of our lives. Put a three in the chat if you want the fire of prayer, the fire of love, and the fire of word of the word in your life. <sighs> Beloved, listen to me. Not only does the fire of the word burn away inner sin, but it also burns away the fat of ignorance. The Bible tells us in, in, in uh, Daniel chapter 12, verse 3, and they that be wise shall shine, almost like shine like a candlestick. Listen, y'all. They that be wise, wise because of what? Because of the word of God. They that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever. But thou, o Daniel, shut up the book, shut up the words, and seal the book even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro. Knowledge shall be increased. I want you to understand. God says, when you increase your knowledge in my word, you're going to shine like the brightness of the stars. Why? Because it's burning away the fat of ignorance. It's burning away the fat, the fat of, of, of that. The Bible says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. It's burning away the fat of ignorance when it comes to the character of God and the nature of God and the plan of salvation of God. God wants this burned out of our lives because it is ignorance of his word that leads to overweight people. Are y'all catching this? All right, so we got the, the, the fire of, 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 of uh, uh, prayer. We've got the fire of, the, of, of, of love. We've got the fire of the word. What about that fourth fire? Come on, let's go back to the screen. That fourth fire is the flame of works. The flame of works, which points us to the candlestick. You, Matthew 5, 14. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A city set on the hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, that, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine that men may see your good what? Your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. I need you to understand this, beloved, that the, that, that the fourth fire of the Holy Spirit is the fire that uh, is the fire of works. Beloved, if the spirit of God is in you, the fruit of that spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering. The fruit of the spirit is going to be manifested in what you do. Your good works. And beloved, this is where Isaiah 58 really comes in handy for us to understand. Because in Isaiah 58, I want you to notice it. Isaiah 58, beginning with verse 1, the Bible says, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice, and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and know and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Watch this. Wherefore have we fasted, they say, and you see not. Wherefore have we afflicted our soul and you take no knowledge? 
Behold, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exact all your labors. Behold, you fast for strife and debate and to smite with the fists of wickedness. You shall not fast this day. Whoa. You shall not fast this day, dad. You shall not fast this day. You shall not fast this day uh, to make your voice to be heard on high. The text goes on to say, Isaiah 58 verse 7, it is not to deal thy bread to the hungry. Uh, is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house when thou seest the naked that thou cover him and that thou hide not thine own self from thine flesh. Watch this verse eight. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning and thine health shall spring forth speedily and righteousness shall go before thee and the glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. God is telling us here that light breaks forth Light breaks forth when we minister to the needy, when we minister to other people. We must have that fire within us. God is saying, you got to have the fire of prayer. You got to have the fire. Listen, you got to have the fire of prayer. You got to have the fire of love. You got to have the fire of the word. You have to have the fire of works. All of this is the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in your life. This is what God is trying to bring about for his people. So, that fire, that fire, beloved, burns the fat of self-complacency, of complacency. It burns the fat of selfishness where you're just concerned about me and my walk and what do I need to, to, to do to be saved? That's selfishness, beloved. I'm not saying it's wrong to be concerned about your own salvation, but beloved, if you're not extending that light to the world, you are, you're getting fat. One of the best ways to lose weight, beloved, is to walk. And so Jesus said, I want y'all to walk into all the world. And bring the gospel. And if we're not walking in the world bringing the gospel, we're just like kind of sitting around getting fat. You might be eating a lot of good food. Man, I love this food, huh? But if you're not exercising it, beloved, if you're not actually putting it into action, you are only getting fat. You're not burning any calories. So how many fires are we on? Is that four? Is that five? Put a four in the chat if you want those four fires. The fire of prayer, the fire of, of, of love, the fire of the word, and the fire of works. Lord, I need those four fires in my life. I need those four fires to fall on me and, and, and set my heart on fire for these things. What about fire number five? Come on, we're almost there. Just, three, just two more after this. Let's go to the screen. Fire number five <clears throat> is the flame of forgiveness and repentance. The flame of forgiveness and repentance, which points us, beloved, to the labor. I hope you see what's beginning to form here. It's as if this seven branch candlestick is embracing everything that we learned up to that point. Each one of those candles is pointing to one of the articles of furniture. Watch, watch, Matthew 3.11. John the Baptist speaking says here, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes are not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. This is the baptism that occurs at the labor, beloved. And this is the, is the spirit of forgiveness, the spirit of repentance. Yes, yes, yes. Not only, beloved, do we need the fire of, of, of prayer and of love and of the word and of, the, of, of works. We also need the fire of forgiveness, the fire of repentance. Because, beloved, it's very simple. The fire of forgiveness and repentance burns away the fat of guilt. It burns away the fat of the sin of guilt, the sin of bitterness, of past sins. 
We need that fire, not only for ourselves, but to give unto others who have sinned against us and who have wronged us. And some of us just don't have the fire to forgive somebody. I just don't have it in me. God says you need that fire. The evidence that the Holy Spirit is upon you is your ability to forgive those that have wronged you. The fire of the Spirit, beloved, burns away the fat of past guilt and past sin. You remember, you remember how uh, Peter told God that, told Jesus that he was going to just go with him to wherever he was going to do everything for him. And, the, and then the Bible records these very sad words in Matthew 26, verse 73. And after a while came unto him, they stood by. And after a while came unto and after a while they came unto him that stood by and said, Peter, surely thou art one of them, for thy speech bereath thee. Then he began to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man, talking about Jesus, and immediately the cock crew. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which he said unto him, before the cock crow, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Can you imagine the guilt that Peter was feeling for his, his betrayal of his master, for his denial of his master? But the Spirit of God, beloved, poured out upon him. Can you imagine the sense of relief when he knows that his past is forgiven, that his sins are forgiven? And he is so excited about this that he's ready to go tell others, hey, repent. Listen, it doesn't matter what you do. If you repent, God will forgive you. We need this fire, beloved, in our hearts. We need the fire, not only of prayer, not only of love, not only of the word, not only of 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 uh, uh, works, but we need the fire of forgiveness and repentance. We need to be baptized with that fire. So beloved, if you want all five of those fires in your life, just give me a five in the chat, please. Yes, pastor, that is me. I need those five fires in my life. Notice Ephesians chapter four, verse 30, which says, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Watch this and be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as Christ for God's sake has forgiven you. Beloved, this is, is the appeal. This is the fire that you receive uh, re representing the labor. It is learning to be tender and kind and putting away malice and bitterness and all those things. This is why we need the fire of, the, of, of, of forgiveness and repentance poured out upon us, beloved. It is absolutely crucial. We got two more fires to cover and then we're going to wrap this up. What is that sixth fire? Please notice with me on the screen, Romans 12 and verse 1. It is the flame of sacrifice, which points us to the altar of sacrifice. Romans 12, 1 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So I want you to understand that when the Bible is saying in Romans 12, 1, that we are to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, what God, what God is trying to remind us here is of the altar of burnt offering, where the entire animal was placed on the altar. He's saying you need to be placed on the altar. You need your entire self set on fire for me. And that points us, beloved, to the fire of the altar of sacrifice. You can't just put an arm on the altar or a leg on the altar or your head on the altar. It's the whole body. This is the fire of the Holy Spirit enveloping, enveloping the entire body. God says, you not only need the fire of love, of prayer. You not only need the fire of love. You not only need the fire of the word. You not only need the fire of your works. You not only need the fire of forgiveness uh, and repentance. You need the fire of entire self-sacrifice upon you, beloved. These are the six flames that God is saying, I want to pour out upon you. And beloved, the fire of, 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 of self-sacrifice burns the fat of self-preservation. It burns the sin of self-preservation. Jesus put it this way in Matthew 10, 38 and 39. He said this, He that taketh not his cross, altar of sacrifice, and follows me, 
is not worthy of me. Verse 39, he says, he that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. In other words, if you put yourself on the altar of sacrifice, that's how you get life. But if you're trying to save your life, that's the fat of sin. You want to know why you're overweight? Because you haven't put yourself on the altar. So how can we burn the sin? How can we burn those calories if you're not, if you're, if the body is not burning? If, if self is not burning, if you're not surrounding yourself with these flames, if the flames are not surrounding you, how are we going to burn those calories? How are we going to burn the old man? One more fire. A pastor, there's seven branches and the fires you just mentioned all covered the articles of furniture. The altar of sacrifice is a fire and the labor is a fire and the table of showbread is a fire and the altar of incense is a fire and the ark of the covenant is a fire and the, and the seven branch candlestick is a fire. Those are six articles of furniture and I see the seven branch candlestick. There are seven uh, uh, branches. There are seven candlesticks. So... If we know all these other six, then what's that seven? I'd like to think of it this way. What's that middle branch? <laughs> what, what's that? What's, what's the middle one? I just like to think of it like this, okay? I just like to think of it like this. Remember what Jesus said in John 15, 5? Notice what he said here. John 15, 5. He said, I am the vine... And you are the what? You are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do how much? Nothing. You can do nothing. Beloved, we need the fire of Jesus in our lives. And you'll remember that Jesus himself said, as long as I'm in the world, I am the what? Light of the world. The Greek for that word light is phos, which means fire. I am the light. I am the fire. I am the centerpiece. I am the one through whom everything flows. I am the vine. You are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Beloved, when we have the fire of Jesus, the light of Jesus in our lives, here's what it does. It burns, listen, it burns the fat of the old man. Because the Bible says in Philippians 2, 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. You see, beloved, listen carefully to me. When we have the fire of Christ in our lives, he replaces our, his mind with our mind. He replaces his, our old, he replaces our mind, I'm sorry, with his mind. He replaces the mind of the old man. The fire burns the fat of the old man. Beloved, listen, 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 listen. In every article of furniture, Jesus is there. That's why he's the center. He's the center of the, of the altar of sacrifice. He's the center of the labor. He's the center of the table of showbread. He's the center of the altar of incense. He's the center of the seven branch candlestick. He's the center of the Ark of the Covenant. So beloved, if you're saying to yourself today, Lord, I need these seven lights, these seven fires in my life, put that seven in the chat. And as you're putting that seven in the chat, because you're now realizing the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in my life is supposed to demonstrate itself in this way. And I've, I've just been like, okay, well, if I just, you know, study my Bible more, then I've been blessed with the Holy Spirit. Beloved, the manifestation of the Spirit sets you on fire in every one of these seven areas. And so now, now we can understand the text. Arise, 
shine for thy light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness shall cover the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Verse three, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light and the kings to thy brightness. Lift up thine eyes round about and see all they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy son shall come from afar and thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side. Verse five. Then thou shalt see and flow together and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. Beloved, I need you to simply get this point that when these seven lights, these seven flames, these seven fires are burning in our lives, we will change the world. We will turn the world upside down. And that, as Ms. Williams says, is a workout. <laughs> That's what happens when God takes you into his sanctuary to train you how to become fit for the kingdom. He takes you to every article of furniture and he says, I'm going to teach you how to use the altar. I'm going to teach you how to pray. And I'm going to teach you how to die to self. And I'm going to teach you how to forgive others. And I'm going to teach you how to get deep into the word. And I'm going to teach you how to love your neighbors. You love yourself. And I'm going to teach you how to have all these things burning in your life at the same time. Not one here and then another here. Now I'm on fire for the word, but yeah, I don't really like, you know, witnessing. Or yeah, I love witnessing, but man, I don't really like studying the Bible. Or, you know, I can't stand my neighbor, but I'll witness. Listen, y'all, listen, the fires must be burning together. Mm. Watch, we're wrapping up, we're wrapping up, we're wrapping up. Listen, listen, did the early church have the flame of prayer? Acts 4.31, and when they prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness. Well, there was the early church. Did the early church have the flame of prayer upon them? Yes, they did. Did the early church have the flame of the word on them? Yes, they did. And daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. The early church, Christi, yes, they were on fire, not just on fire. They were on seven fires. They had seven fires burning in them simultaneously. What about the flame of works? Did they have the flame of works burning in them? All you got to do is look at the name of that book after the Gospels. It is the book of what? The book of what? It is the book of Acts, y'all. It is the book of the candlestick. It is the book showing the works that the early church did. Did they have the fire of the candlestick, the fire of works burning in them? Yes, they did. Did they have the flame of love burning in them? Yes, because beloved among them, they wrote for the love of Christ constrains us. The love of Christ is what moves us to action. And that's why they did what they did. Did they have the love of forgiveness and repentance? Listen, that's what they went forward sharing with the whole world. Luke 24 verse 47. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among nations beginning at Jerusalem. And you're all witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, but tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high beloved they had the fire of the of, of forgiveness and repentance upon them they had the flame of sacrifice upon them and this is the one one of the best examples i could think of y'all remember the story where peter i'm sorry paul some prophets come to paul and tell him hey listen they they take his garment and they bind their hands and they say this is what's going to happen to the man who owns his garment who goes to jerusalem and, Paul, and then they start telling him, Paul, don't go to Jerusalem because you'll die there. The Spirit just told us that. And, and I love Paul's response. L look, at, look, at, look at the text. Acts 2 verse 11. And when he was come unto us, they took Paul and girded his own, his gir and Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said, thus saith the Holy Ghost, so shall the Jews of Jerusalem bind the man that owned this girdle and shall deliver him into the hand of the Gentiles. 
And when he had heard these things, both we and they of that place besought him not to go to Jerusalem. Don't go, Paul. You're going to die. You don't want to sacrifice yourself. And watch Paul's answer. Then Paul answered, what mean ye to weep and break my heart? <laughs> Let me pause for a second, man. Let me just, what mean thee to weep and break? Like you can hear the violin music playing. Paul's like, why are you, you guys, you're breaking my heart. Are you sad for me? And then notice what he says. Let's go back to the screen. He says, for I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord. And when he would not be persuaded, we ceased saying the will of the Lord be done. Beloved, do you, do you think the early church had a spirit of self-sacrifice, the fire of self-sacrifice upon them? They're trying to persuade Paul not to go and die for Jesus, not to go and die for the gospel's sake. You know, we need you to be preaching. And Paul says, no, nah, I got a mission. Beloved, listen to me. The early church, they had every flame, including the flame of Jesus. First Corinthians 2 to our last text, it says, For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. The reason the early church was in such good shape, the reason the early church was so fit for the kingdom, the reason the early church was so on fire is because of these seven fires that were burning simultaneously in them. And what God is trying to tell us today, beloved, is very simple. You need these seven fires in your life. Not two, not three, not five, not six. You need seven. These are the seven flames you need burning in your life. And beloved, when these seven flames are burning in your life, it's going to make you sweat. It's going to make you burn calories. There is no option but to burn calories. You are going to lose weight. People are going to look at you and be like, man, what, what have you been doing? You look good. You look like Jesus. What you been doing? Remember we talked about the before and after picture? You take your before picture, this is what I look like, you know, uh, five weeks ago, three months ago, three years ago. That's your before picture, your after picture. People be like, man, what are you doing? Are you, are you working out? Are you exercising? You tell them, yeah. Man, you, you, you look like Jesus. How many of you want to look like Jesus? Jesus is the fittest man there ever was. Fittest man there ever was. No fat on him. No fat on him. All power, all muscle, all strength. Now, beloved, listen, we, we, we can't, Jesus never had any fat on him. We can't be like him. But you know what? He can get us to look, he can get us to look like him. He can get us to look like him. So yeah, we need an extreme makeover. We need an ex extreme, we need to hit the gym. We need to make that resolution saying, all right, Lord, I get it now. You've just taken me on a tour through your gym. If anyone has ever gone to a gym to, and, and, and you go there the first time, what do they do? They take you on a tour through the gym. Here's our workout stations here. This is what we do here. They take you so you can get, you can understand how the gym works. The sanctuary is God's gym. Over the last six weeks, he has walked us through the sanctuary, showing us every article of furniture and how they are designed to get us fit for the kingdom of heaven. My appeal today as we close. My appeal today as we close. Lord, I have fat in my life that I've been trying everything to get rid of, but I just haven't been doing it the right way. I've been trying to do it in my own strength, I've been trying to do it, you know, a lack of days ago, here some, there a little, here a little. Today, Lord, I'm realizing that I need those seven fires burning within me. But I cannot get that, can I cannot reach that candlestick status if I haven't learned how to use the altar of sacrifice, if I haven't learned how to use the laver or the table of showbread or to love my neighbor. So Lord, teach me. Sign me up for this gym. Lifetime membership. Lifetime membership. 
Lord, become my trainer. My goal is to build muscle, lose fat, build endurance. So teach me, Lord, like only you can. Put a seven in the chat. Seven in the chat if you're saying today, Lord, that's my desire. You may be watching for the first time today. And today you're saying, Lord, I, I want to give you a chance. I want to give you an opportunity. I want you to put that seven in the chat. Lord, I don't know much about you, but man, if, if I can look like, you know, <clears throat> when you have a goal, you know, I want to look like this in three weeks, in five weeks, in six months. You have to have that picture of, you have to have that vision of what you want to be. <clears throat> and God is saying, I want you to look at Jesus and that's who I want you to be like. I want you to imagine yourself as humble. I want you to imagine yourself as loving. I want you to imagine yourself as kind. I want you to imagine yourself when people see you, they're like, man, this guy, this girl is X. What do you want people to say about you? Envision that. You might say, that's not me. Nobody likes me. You may say all of that. I want you to just imagine, what would you like people to say about you? And now you're going to work towards that goal. I want people to see me like Jesus. I want people to see me as one having the Holy Spirit and work towards that goal. You can't do it in your own strength. You must do it in the strength of Christ. And he's going to take you through every article of furniture and teach you day by day, week by week until, beloved, you're going to begin to look and say, whoa, I think I just lost 10 pounds of sin. Last week, I was 228. This week, I'm... I'm 220. This week, I'm 215. God is trying to help you to get fit for the kingdom, in shape for the kingdom. And the sanctuary, beloved, is his training plan. Amen.